In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this Bluetooth boombox. Let's get started. This is going to be the first video in a multi-part playlist, so be sure and hit subscribe so you can catch all the videos. Let's jump right into the build. Here's a money-saving tip for any DIY audio guy or gal. I'm using rejects and offcuts from a local cabinet shop. Just keep an eye out on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. It's cheaper for them to give it away than to haul it to the dump. And it's much better quality than most consumers can get their hands on. It costs nothing but time. This is half inch birch veneer plywood. It's really nice stuff. The piece is about 16 inches wide and 10 feet long. It's far too big to cut safely on a table saw. I've tried that before and it was a bad idea. So I rough cut it with my circular saw and a Craig jig before I brought it to the final width on a table saw. I want to point out that the distance from the blade to the fence is longer than the distance across the board. That is not a safe cut to make on a table saw and it could cause kickback. So don't do this. Now I'm going to set the saw to five inches and cut the back in the baffle. Here is another DIY audio guide tip. For a simple rectangular enclosure, you should only move the table saw fence three times. If I have any other five inch cuts to make, I need to go ahead and do it right now. If I accidentally set the fence 1 16th of an inch too big and then come back later and make a five inch cut, there's a chance I might set it 1 16th of an inch too small. When it comes time to assemble, I'll be off by an eighth of an inch. Every measurement is prone to error. The key is to make the same error every single time. It's also a good idea to make a few extras. That way, if I botch something later on, I don't have to go back and reset the table saw for another five inch cut. When you plan your project, go ahead and plan to make those extra cuts. It's much better to have scraps that you don't use than to run out of parts and have to go back to the saw and just hope you can accurately replicate your first cut. Now I set the saw to four inches to cut the top, bottom, sides, and two dividers, making a few extra pieces just in case. I hope you're enjoying this project video. I'm trying some different editing techniques, split screens, transitions, cutting back and forth between different camera angles. Let me know in the comments if you think these things make the video better or worse. While you're at it, I would appreciate if you'd hit that like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell so you'll get a notification when I upload the rest of the videos for this project. Oh, by the way, remember those extra cuts? Well, the sides are four inches by four inches. So now I just need to cut those out using the extra pieces I made when cutting the tops and the bottoms. Here, the width of my workpiece is the same as the distance from the fence to the blade. So this cut is perfectly safe. But since my hands are very close to the blade, I'm using a push stick and I've got my push block ready to go if I happen to need it. Off camera, I cut a three inch hole for the mid range driver. The spec sheet says that the cutout diameter is 3.05 inches. So now I need to do some sanding to get a perfect fit. This project also uses an air motion transformer tweeter, which is mounted in a 1.65 inch diameter pod. I routed out a hole that is just slightly oversized. My plan is to wrap the tweeter with gasket tape and press fit it into the baffle. I always make test holes in scrap wood to make sure the drivers will fit properly. Now I need to transfer those test holes to a baffle template that I will then use to position my speakers perfectly on the baffle of the final project. I start by marking a half inch around the template to account for the top, bottom, and sides of the enclosure. Then I trace out the speaker locations using my test holes. Now I need to pre-drill the template so I can insert a router bit later. I stick my templates together using double-sided carpet tape. Now you can go out and buy template tape that's designed just for this, but I found that double-sided carpet tape does the trick just fine. Now it's just a matter of popping over to the router and routing out the hole for the tweeter and the mid-range on my baffle template. Now my baffle template is ready to go. 
all I have to do is put some double-sided tape on it. This is double-sided carpet tape that you can pick up at any big box store on Amazon or any place like that. I'll give you a link to this product in the description. You just stick it on and then take a knife and peel off the back and then flip it over and stick it to your piece and then you can route out your holes with a flush trim bit on the router. So we're at the router now and we've just taped our baffle templates to our actual baffle and we just route it out. There's really not that much to it. Just be very careful with the router. I've got a router safety video. I'll give you a link to that right here. Making a baffle template is a lot of extra work. It adds an extra step to a process. It's hot and sweaty and you get tired of doing this sometimes, but it's worth the trouble to go ahead and make that baffle template because that way you can easily make a mirror image of your baffle on the second set of speakers, or in this case, it's just gonna be one big long baffle. Definitely worth the extra time and trouble to make that baffle template. I'm just gonna stick some tape on it, flip it over and make the other baffle. And that baffle template was completely worth the trouble because now I've got a perfect mirror image for my mid-range and my tweeter on both sides of the speaker. The next step is to cut out a hole using the jigsaw. I'm gonna be using a car audio receiver. I'll give you a link to uh, a video where I highlight that car audio receiver right here. And so I'm just using the jigsaw to kind of cut along the line and I'll be honest with you, I kind of botched it. Two things went wrong. First, I didn't do a good job of holding my jigsaw nice and straight. And second, the jigsaw had a lot of tear out. When working with this kind of veneered plywood, the stuff can be a little bit on the delicate side, especially that veneered surface. And I got way too much chip out and it looked like crap. And I decided to start over again and just use the router to route out uh, the, the cutout for the car audio receiver that I'm gonna be using for this project. I'm going to use a cage mount to mount the car audio receiver and as you can see the cage fits just about perfectly. I had to do a little bit of sanding in the corners to get it to mount just exactly right. Since I had to throw away the first piece because of all the tear out, that meant I also had to cut out the uh, speaker holes again as well on the router. So here we are once again back at the router routing out speaker holes. Now I'm finished with the woodworking part of this project, but there's still a whole lot left to do. I've still got to wire up the crossovers. I've still got to put the speakers in. I've still got to finish it so it looks nice. And I'm going to make a playlist for all of these. And if you'll give me a like and a subscribe, you won't miss any of the rest of this build log. Thank you so much for watching my build log. Uh, stick around for more.